Oh, great, great. Now I guess we'll move on to the uh, okay, another part and it's the IELTS uh, challenge. Again, we will be listening to an audio clip and answering a question like always. So yeah, let's see what we have here. Greek island holidays, can I help you? Yes, I hope so. I have a friend who's just come back from Corfu and she's recommended some apartments in Aralus. She thought they might be on your list. Aralus, Aralus, let me see. Uh, can you give me the names? Yes, the first Rose Garden Apartments. I'd like to go with another friend in the last week of October. Well, we've got a lovely studio flat available at that time. I'm sure you'd enjoy the entertainment program there too, with Greek dancing in the restaurant. And the cost for each of us? £219. That sounds very reasonable. I'm just jotting down some notes. Now, the second one she mentioned was called Blue Bay. Blue Bay. Yes. In fact, that's very popular and it has some special features. Really? The main attraction is the large swimming pool with salt water. Mm, much healthier, I understand. That's right. And it isn't far from the beach either. Only 300 metres. And only around half a kilometre to some shops, so you don't have to be too energetic. Is it much more expensive than the first one? Let me just check. I think at the time you want to go, it's around £260. Uh, no, £275 to be exact. Right, I've got that. Now, there are just two more apartments to ask you about. Um, I can't read my own writing. Something to do with sun, sunshine, is it? I think you meant the sunshade apartments. They're on a mountainside. Any special features? Yes, each room has its own sun terrace and there are shared barbecue facilities. Ooh, sounds lovely. Yes, it is rather well equipped. It also provides water sports. It has its own beach. There are facilities for water skiing. Any kite surfing? My friend's quite keen. Not at the hotel, but I'm sure you'll find some in Arillus. There's also satellite TV in the apartments. And how much is that one? £490 with two sharing. You mean £245 each? I'm afraid not. Each person has to pay that amount and there must be at least two in an apartment. Oh, I don't think that would be within our budget, unfortunately. And the last one sounds a bit expensive too. The Grand? Actually, it's quite reasonable. It's an older style house with Greek paintings in every room and a balcony outside. Sounds nice. What are the views like? Well, there are forests all round and they hide a supermarket just down the road. So that's very useful for all your shopping needs. Uh, there's a disco in the area too. And the price? £319 at that time. But if you leave it till November, it goes down by 40%. Mm, too late, I'm afraid. Well, why don't I send you a brochure with full details, Miss... Nash. But don't worry about that. I'm coming to Upminster soon and I'll call and get one. I just wanted to get an idea first. Well, that's fine. Uh, we've got plenty here when you come. OK. Uh, so the questions are the... Guy works at the Greek island holidays uh, or British island holidays or French island holidays. And the second question is, the lady wanted to go for her vacation on the A, last week of September, B, last week of October, C, last week of November. And the third question is, uh, Blue Bay has a large swimming pool with salt, wa salt water, uh, A, 260 pounds, B, 275 pounds, and C, 250 pounds. So let's see how the audience answers. And the results are in. So for the first question, A, Greek island holidays wins by 95%. And for the second question, B wins uh, with 53% uh, for the last week of October. And as for the third question, B also wins with 44% for 275 pounds. Um, let's go to our instructors. Uh, so uh, for, the, for me, 
Uh, I can't. Uh, I, I'm not sure about the first answer, but uh, I will go for the majority that it's a Greek island. And for the second, she mentioned uh, at, the, at the very beginning of the audio that she wants to go at the last of October. And for the third, um, he correct. He firstly said that it's twenty uh, two hundred and sixty pounds, and then he corrected that it's two hundred and seventy five pounds. So it's uh, two hundred and seventy five pounds. Let's hear some other uh, responses. Um. I, I, I agree with the majority on the first question. Um, on the second one, she did mention it was a, she wanted to go on the last week of October. So the majority would be right on that one as well. And on the third one, he said 260 and then he corrected himself and said 275, which could have thrown people off. Um, uh, so I'd agree with the majority on the third one as well. Well, I agree with the first question and the second question as well uh, with the audience and with the instructor. And the third question, I think uh, what I heard uh, now the price is uh, to, uh, 275, but, but in October it's going to be to, uh, 260. That's what I heard. So, yeah. I also agree with the majority. I think uh, uh, questions one, the Greek, question two, last week of October in question three, um, after correction, it was 275 pounds. Okay, so we're going to move on to the second part of the IELTS uh, challenge, challenge. And yeah, let's listen to the audio clip. Can I help you? Yes, I've just moved to this area with my wife and children, and I'd like to know where we can all register with a doctor at a health centre. Oh, OK. Uh, well, there's Dr Green at the Harvey Clinic. We always recommend her for babies because she's very good with them and she runs a special clinic. Oh, uh, actually, my youngest child is five, so that wouldn't be any good for us. Right. Is there anywhere else I could try? Yes, the Eshkol Health Practice is the next one on my list. How do you spell that? E-S-H-C-O-L. And it's Dr Fuller who has space on his list. The clinic only opened a year ago, so the facilities are all very modern. That sounds good. Hmm. And it's particularly good if you're busy during the day because they also do appointments in the evening. Hmm. They're closed on Saturday, though. The only other place on the list is the health centre on Shaw Lane. You can register with Dr Gormley. Uh, that's G-O-R-M-L-E-Y. He's new there, but the centre has a very good reputation. Oh, yes. I think I know the road. That would be the best one. Thanks. Could you tell me, will all their services be free? Uh, there are usually some small charges that doctors make. Uh, let me see what it says about the Shaw Lane Centre. If you need to be vaccinated before any trips abroad, you won't have to pay for this. Uh, what else? The Sports Injury Treatment Service operates on a paying basis, as does the Nutritional Therapy Service. Mm -hmm. Some health centres do offer alternative therapies like homeopathy as part of their pay-to-use service. Shaw Lane are hoping to do this soon. I think they may start with acupuncture. Oh. And finally, if you need to prove you're healthy or haven't had any serious injuries before a new employer will accept you, you can get a free fitness check up there. But you'd most likely have to pay for insurance medicals, though. OK, thanks. OK, so that was the end of that part. And the questions are, Dr. Dr. Green is a good choice for the guy's family. It's a yes or no question. And then the second question is the doctor services are totally free. Also a yes or no question. So let's see how the audience answers these two questions. Uh, 
And the answers are in uh, for the first question, yes wins by 71%. And for the second question, no wins by 74%. So let's move to our instructors. I think I disagree on the first question. Um, she said that Dr. Green was uh, best for families with babies. And the guy said his uh, youngest child was older than that. So he wanted to choose a different doctor other than Dr. Green. So I would have picked no for that one. Um, but the answer for question two is no. She said there would be some small fees for some of the services. And I agree with Paul. I think question one, um, I disagree with the majority um, because uh, Dr. Green is not a good choice actually for uh, the guy's family. And I agree with the majority and Paul on the second question, uh, the doctor services are uh, not totally free. Yeah, um, uh, I, I would also disagree with the majority because uh, she said that Dr. Green was good with babies and his young and the guy's youngest child was I think five. So um, I disagree with the majority on the first one. And then on the second one, um, the services are not free. Um, she did. She did say that there were small fees for certain services. So, so do I. I totally agree with the other instructors' opinion, um, and their comments are are what I what I wanted to say. Thanks. Test. Okay, so we are going to move on to the last part of this session, the radio challenge. Uh, so yeah, again, it's an audio clip. We'll listen to it and then answer these two questions. Well, even with a solid increase in hiring last month, the economy remains more than 8 million jobs short of the number it had before the pandemic. But with the recovery widely expected to strengthen, Many forecasters predict enough hiring in the coming months to recover nearly all those lost jobs by year's end. How can you prepare if you're looking for work? Tips from Jackie Ducci, founder and CEO of the job placement firm Ducci & Associates. Jackie, help us out. Well, I mean, the good news is hiring is definitely picking up. So I think we're kind of coming into this period of pandemic recovery, I hope. That's what seems to be happening. I think that's in large part due to vaccines and a few other things, but... What's really interesting is that jobs are being created, but they're not necessarily being filled. So on the higher end, like the high paying jobs, um, you know, they're sitting vacant because people aren't qualified for them or the people who are don't want to make a move right now. And then unfortunately, with the lower paying jobs, people are figuring out that they can collect unemployment and kind of be home and make the same amount. So it's kind of an interesting situation that we're in. Wow. Is this the kind of period in time where it might be a good idea to go for a career shift or change of some kind? A lot of people are opting to do that. I mean, I think for people who think that through and really have a plan for how to get there, it's a great time to do that. Um, you know, it is competitive out there, but again, a lot of jobs are sitting vacant. So if you can convince an employer why your skill set translates, it could be a really, really good time to just take a gamble and try to make that happen. All right. So you bring up a good point then. Uh, so what would that plan look like if you say you need to have a good plan to do this? Well, I think it's all about fit. So it's always trying to convey to a hiring manager why you are a good match. So even if, if you're making a switch and you're coming out of a different industry, really honing in on, okay, but how do the things that you know how to do translate to that company? I also think it's, enthusiasm is just such a big deal. And this is something that companies talk to me about all the time. They want people who just genuinely want to be a part of their team. So it could even be something like, you know, you relate to the mission of the company or something like that, that can actually get you the job in a lot of cases. So just always talking about, you know, why you feel like you're a great fit there for the long term is a winning strategy always. And I, I guess your, your attitude and or enthusiasm um, can maybe check some boxes that were not necessarily checked in, in all the requirements for the job in the listing, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really interesting how employers tune into that kind of stuff. I mean, it's so much more than just finding someone who has the skills for a job. And I think in large part, that's because these companies are concerned about retention. 
you know, they don't just want to fill a seat. They want to have somebody come and stay for as long as possible. So they're thinking about personality and they're tuning into all those other things that are not going to be on a resume. So it's all important components to the puzzle. Yeah. We're speaking with Jackie Ducci. She's the CEO and founder of Ducci Associates, a recruiting and coaching firm. Um, so do we, as applicants, have to think differently in, say, in the midst of or post-pandemic here? Do we need to be using different phrases uh, in an application or, uh, or an email to a hiring manager? No, and I always say this to people, getting hired at the end of the day is actually not rocket science. <laughs> it's really not. I mean, the simplest things like being prompt in your communications. You know, if a hiring manager reaches out to you, don't take three days to get back to them. I know this sounds ridiculous, but these are the mistakes that people make. So if you show enthusiasm, if you're prompt, if you communicate well, if you show why you're a fit for the job, like just those simple things will put you ahead of 90% of the people that are competing against you. All right. So the questions are, uh, do we need to add something special to our resume to get hired after the pandemic? It's a yes or no question. And the second question is the hiring, the hiring will not pick up and we will stay home forever. It is also a yes or no question. And God forbid that actually is true. So <laughs> yeah. And the results are in. So First one, yes, wins by 69%. And the second one, no wins by 81%. I'm actually happy to see that no. So yeah, let's see what our instructors think. Um, I'm just going to say really quickly that I don't, I'm on the first one, I don't exactly know what threw people off, but I know that the first one um, is a no. And the second one would also be a no. Um, on the first one, I'm not exactly sure what threw people off, but uh, I, I think it is a no on the first one. I think uh, I go for a yes for the first because uh, she mentioned that uh, she should uh, um, make her manager or whoever is hiring her um, like uh, give her give him some special uh, things about her. And for the second, uh, I wish it's no. <laughs> I wish. I would pick no for uh, both of these. Um, I don't really think she mentioned resumes very much at all. Um, she did say the most important thing was being prompt in your communication, being enthusiastic. Um, and also for number two, I would pick no at the beginning. Uh, she said that hiring was picking up. Oh, actually, yes. She didn't mention any resume, so I changed my my opinion. I go for no. Yes, yeah, so uh, both answers would be no, I think, because um, she did not mention anything specific to add to your resume to get hired. And uh, for the second question, she said that the hiring will pick up. Yep, I also would have to agree. Uh... Uh, with Paul and Alexandro, uh, no on question one and no on question two. No. All right. So that was the end of the session. So we have homework for you guys, uh, the audience, of course. So your homework is to watch this lecture and Dr. Hassan El Mardash's interview on Arab Guru YouTube channel. And then you have to answer the quiz in your Google Classroom. But yeah, this marks the end of the second session. Instructors, thank you so much for being here to answer the questions along with the audience. Uh, thank you attendees for being here. I hope that this was beneficial for you. As always, this was very fun to moderate and yeah, stay safe, wear a mask and have a great day. Bye. Thank you everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.